This device will not only show if there is electricity, but also indicate if the wires were correctly installed. I can show you all day long about me doing stuff in the house, but with electrical stuff I'm not sure it's really clear, so I'll move to the whiteboard. This is my house. It has a main cable, electrical cable, that is running into the house and is connected into the breaker box. From the breaker box I have switches. And from those switches I have more cables running into rooms number 1, 2 and 3. Why do we need switches? If I want to work on room number 3, I want that the rest of the house will have electricity. I'm turning this switch off, room number 3 doesn't have electricity, while the entire house still has. What's inside a cable? Inside the cable we have 3 or more cables. Hot, neutral, and ground for now. This is an outlet. It has several holes from each side. As I mentioned we have three wires and we need to find the holes for them. The green one is for the ground. This is for neutral. This is for hot. You might ask yourself if I have only three wires, why do I need so many holes? Imagine the following example. Two outlets in one room. I will take the cable and connect it, as I just described, to the first one. Then I will take completely new cable. I will copy whatever I did here with the ground neutral and hot and connect it to the next one. This type of connection is called series. You can google it. The problem with it is that if this outlet stopped working from any reason the cable came loose, any reason at all, all the adjacent outlets will stop working as well. This is why some smart people introduced the parallel design, which means I will take the main cable, split it earlier, and run it to one outlet and to the second one without this connection. This means that if this outlet stopped working, this will still work because it has the main cable connected to it. I hope this explains about series, parallel connection, outlets, breaker box and what's inside the cable. Now let's move on to switches. As you can see it has multiple holes and usually the manufacturer will provide a diagram which will show you how to connect the cable to the switch and then to the light source. It will also have some kind of single pole and three-way and some of them support multiple ways. What does it even mean? So a single is one cable running to one switch to one light source. Everything is single. Once you make it more complex then it's three-way or multiple. Let's make it more complex. If you have a situation where you have two switches controlling one light source, you are talking about three-way. If you have more switches controlling one light source, it's multiple. Let me give you an example. For example, your bedroom. Uh, imagine that you enter your bedroom, you turn your switch on, the light turns on, you're lying in your bed, and then you want to turn it off. 
likely you have some switch next to your bed and you don't have to get up and touch that switch. This is that scenario. Before having this knowledge, it was hard for me and intimidating when I purchased my first electrical cable. I didn't know what to expect, I didn't know what's inside and apparently there are some cables with three wires and some with four. So we talked about the three, the hot, neutral and ground. Let me talk about the other one, the red one. In case of single switch, I didn't use the red cable, it's not required. But when I needed to use multiple switches that control one light source, I had to use the red one. So if you're doing this project on your own and you have multiple switches that control one bulb, you will need a red cable. Another thing that I want to talk about is gauges. The higher the gauge, the thinner the cable. The thinner the cable, the less electricity it can transfer through it. If you're doing this project on your own and you're not sure what gauge you need, check your outlet and Google it. The form will tell you what gauge you currently have. Now that I found what's going on here, let me show you. One main cable that is coming from the breaker box and then the rest cables are just an intersection. This one goes to the ceiling, this one goes to the outlet, this one is going to the switch. I was able to find the main one by first disconnecting all this mess, separating them, making sure that the cables are not touching each other and then turning on the switch on the breaker box and uh, checking with uh, the special instrument where I have uh, electricity and I had only one cable. I accidentally used the 14 gauge instead of the 12 gauge cable which is white and not yellow. After finishing all the wiring I realized the mistake and rewired everything to the 12 gauge yellow cable. That's why you'll see at some point of this video that all the white cables turned yellow. The confusion occurred since all the old cables were white and only after cutting and pulling them out of the wall the 12 gauge number imprint was readable. And if we're talking about confusion, the black and white on my electrical cable goes to the brown and blue in this light respectively. The lights were purchased from Amazon, I'll put the link in the description, from a brand called Isilan, which vaguely translates to the purity of an orchid along with hope and love. I had the chance to talk with one of the owners and it seems that a lot of thought and desire is given when designing their products. After having and using them for around 4 months, I'm very pleased with them and unlike other brands, they don't have any kind of annoying high pitch sound coming from them. I use the same distance as I used on the other side and from here I need two more lights in this spot and that spot. I'm using this triangle, making sure it's on the same line. Now I'm going to show how I wire those lights. Remember that I eventually switched to a yellow 12 gauge cable. Let's assume that I have only two lights and not four like I'm planning to do there. And I want to make a parallel connection. This will be my first cable, let's call it first. This is the light. If I will connect it like that, and then from this light to the other one, it will not be parallel connection. All the electricity will come to this light, and then the rest will somehow go along the way. This is not consistent, and if this fails, this will not get electricity. So I want to make it parallel. So if this fails, this will still work. How to do it? I will create a junction here with this extension box and have a new set of cables running from this junction to the first light. Then another set of the same cables running to a second junction box. or extension box, call it whatever. And then, again, another cable 
will go directly to the light success and if I have more lights I'll just continue to do the same thing how to connect these cables together or these cables together with a wire connection twist oh, the main inspector is here yeah. I have a blue and a brown color the brown is the hot and the blue is the neutral or in our case the brown is black and the blue is white there is no ground getting back to the example so the main cable will come here and the extension will run here I only need two cables here the hot and the neutral so I took from the main cable the hot and the neutral I will cut it into length and I will just run it in this, this box to the light directly. I've prepared the hot and neutral in every hole and now it's time to copy the design to the attic. The room is located at the very end, so I had to crawl over there. For those wondering, that's a whole house fan which I cancelled in my things to consider when remodeling video. That's how it looks from the attic, and I removed it off camera. The cables were slided from the attic and marked below, so I will distinguish between what cable goes to which switch. You can see that one is brown, one is blue. Brown to black, blue to white. Apart from the ICLN lights, I use this hanger for the pendant which will be placed above my maple table. This will go to the studs. It is adjustable so it can be smaller or longer per need. And now you see the 12 gauge yellow cables instead of the 14 gauge white ones. I had to extend and split the main cable to support parallel design, so I created these extensions. They will be connected to the new wires. I'm doing one by one, making sure that everything is working, being careful not to die. Finally, I have lights. If you do it on your own, please don't die.
Finding a pendant that doesn't have an annoying high pitch sound wasn't easy. And I won't even start talking about the terrible hanging design some of them have. Eventually a brand called Jonathan Y worked for me. I'll leave a link in the description. The switches are dimmable and can be controlled from the phone. Time taken, around 2 days. Cost for materials, around 600. Cost for materials and tools, around 1300. Thanks for watching.